Hello, my name is Hannah Kane, and I'm recording a video for my final intergenerational communication project. I will be structuring this by going through each person I interviewed and going through all seven questions with each person. So the first person I interviewed was my friend Andrew. He is 21 years old and was born in 1999, which puts him technically in the Generation Z, but he called himself a Gen Y but he said that he identified mostly with gen the GI generation because of their hardworking um, personalities and their the blue collared class that a lot of them grew up with. Um, he identifies most with his generation um, with the realistic ideas that they have and seeing things the way they are, not sugarcoating um, certain things. And he does not identify with the tech de being tech dependent like a lot of his peers are and he's not as outspoken on social media. He feels that posting his views is not gonna change others' views. The third question was, which aspects of other generations do you identify with and which generation or aspects of another generation seem most different? He, like I said before, he identified a lot with the GI generation and that they're non-protesters and very hard workers. And he thought the most different generation were the baby boomers, specifically the hippies, protesters and people that were free-spirited. The fourth question was, what would you like me or my generation to know, understand, or appreciate about your generation? And we are the same generation, but he thinks that um, since we grew up on technology, we know how to use it, whereas other generations get frustrated with it because they don't know how to use it, and they might only know, only see the negative things about it, but our generation is able to see all the positives and all the negatives and other generations can get frustrated when they only can see the negatives. Um, the next thing is tell me something about your childhood that you feel helped influence who you are today. Um, what happened that you think will be with you for the rest of your life? And he said that school shootings and um, influenced his childhood. He's very aware of where he is in public places and the drills in school like shaped him to be very aware of where he is. and. He also thought that not having technology like iPads as a young child shaped him have, have, uh, when he was a kid because the kids nowadays are so technology dependent. They need it to stay busy and they don't know how to like enjoy themselves without it. And then another thing that he thought would stick with him for the rest of his life is being in school, specifically in college during this COVID-19 global pandemic. Question six is what happened in childhood that you thought would matter throughout your life but does not matter as much anymore? And for this, he said 9-11 um, in Al-Qaeda, he thought terrorists would be much of a bigger issue and be hitting a lot closer to home than it seems that they do. And he thought that it would get a lot worse. And then another thing that he mentioned was climate change and how during our generation, we've really seen it evolve into a much serious issue than it was in the past. Um, our generation like makes it a very big deal, but other generations don't see it as such a big deal, but they do acknowledge that it happens. And then what do you wish other generations would understand better or know about your generation? And what he said for this one, I said it in my in-class presentation, was that not everyone listens to shitty music and that not everyone has the same ideas and opinions, even though on social media it may seem that way because there's only not everyone posts what they're thinking. Like he said earlier, he doesn't feel like him posting his ideas is going to other, persuade others to change theirs, so he doesn't. And social media may look it may look like all people from Gen Z have the same ideas, but they don't. And then one more thing is that not everyone is lazy or undisciplined, that there are still hard workers. And this leads me to the next person that I interviewed, which was my mom. And she is technically part of Gen X, but she identifies as a baby boomer. And I think this is mostly because she has um, older siblings that are all baby boomers. So I think that growing up with all of them definitely influenced her. What generation, what qualities of your generation do you identify most with and least with? And she identifies most with taking responsibility for her actions and owning up to what she did right or what she did wrong. And she does not identify with um, the closed mindedness that some people in her generation have, specifically towards like the LGBTQ plus community and that some people in her generation not being understanding or accepting of them, but she feels that she is. Um, the third question is, which aspects of other generations do you identify with? Or which aspects of another generation do you seem the most different? She said that 
for the third question that other generations, specifically the older ones, she identifies mostly with because they're hard workers and they lived a slower paced lifestyle like she did. Um, and the most different are the younger generations because they have a culture of excuses, not owning up to what they did, and their feeling of entitlement and things being handed to them. The fourth question is, what would you like me or my generation to know, understand, or appreciate about your generation? And she wants us to like understand, appreciate that she felt like her generation had a more carefree lifestyle um, during their youth and college and young adulthood because there was no technology, they weren't being monitored or watched, and she thought that life moved a lot slower, had a slower pace. Question five was, tell me something about your childhood that you feel helped influence who you are today. And she thought that growing up, being part of like a blue collar family and not having a lot of materials, not having a ton of money growing up, um, really influenced who she is today and not being super materialistic. Um, question six, what happened in childhood that you thought would matter throughout your life but does not now? And she said growing up, like family meals were super important. And when she got to adulthood, she didn't think they were unimportant, but life got very busy and moved a lot faster and, they didn't all and we didn't always have time for that growing up. And then finally, question seven, what do you wish other generations understood better about your generation? And she wants them to know like that her generation has a strong sense of responsibility for their actions and that they don't take things for granted, whereas she thinks younger generations do take things for granted. The third person that I interviewed was my grandma, and my grandpa was on the phone during the call, so I'm going to talk about a little bit of what he said, too. They are both part of the silent generation, and she mostly identified with the strong worth ethic that her generation has and their respect for elders. She said that they always called them by their Mr. and Mrs. instead of by first name, and that people in her generation are very loyal to their employers. They stuck with one employer throughout their entire career and didn't jump around as much like people do today and she also thought that people in her generation like don't waste any money and they don't overspend they're more like frugal and like put a lot into savings for retirement she least identified with being technologically challenged she thinks that she tries really hard and my gram they both have iphones like they know how to facetime and they are like they're pretty good at technology for the older generation from what my experience the third question was, which aspects of other generations do you identify with and which generation or aspects of another generation seem most different? She identifies a lot with the baby boomers because they are very hardworking and they're disciplined, have a strong worth ethic, and are self-sufficient. And the ones that seem the most different are, or I'm sorry, <laughs> which generation or aspects of another generation seem the most different? And she said the ones that seem the most different is Generation Z because um, we are very racially and ethnically diverse and not that her generation was not as diverse. And so it just is a big difference and like not a culture shock, but something that she said wouldn't have happened back then. But people now like you see like a couple that's got two different people from two different cultures and you don't think anything of it. But back then people just that wasn't as common. And another thing that she thought was really different was millennials living together before they are married. She said that was like a big no, no, no one did that when she was growing up. And another thing was being a single parent. And today it's not of a big deal, but before it was. Um, the next question is question four. What would you like me or my generation to know, appreciate or understand about your generation? And she wants me to know that I should be appreciative of everything like her generation is and to be her generation is very caring of the people that need help, whereas other generations are more individualistic, but hers was very much a caring and more protective of everyone. And then question five, tell me something about your childhood that you feel helped influence who you are today. What happened that you think will be with you for the rest of your life? And my, my grandma got emotional when she was talking about this. She talked about how her parents always told her that honesty is the best policy and to not lie and to always be responsible for your actions um, because liars get caught and as long as you tell the truth that they will always trust you. And then my grandpa also chimed in on this question. He said, you know when you aren't doing your best work, you'll pay the consequences. So always take responsibility for your mistakes. And he learned that in his Catholic education that he went to. 
Um, question six was what happened in your childhood that you thought would matter throughout your life but does not matter now? And for this one, my grandma talked about how she thought that like always having the house like be super clean, spotless, and always having a good meal ready for dinner was super important and like the woman's responsibility in the household. But as she became a wife and mother, she realized that this is still important, but it's not going to be a priority in her life. And then question seven, what do you wish other generations understood better about your generation? And she said that she wants other generations to be more patient with her. Like she knows that she's older and a little bit slower and she understands a lot of things, but sometimes it takes her a bit longer to understand because our generation grew up with so much education and her generation's knowledgeable, but they did not nearly have as good of an education as we do now. So it takes a little bit longer for them to catch on to things or to learn things that we might have just grown up always knowing. And then finally, for the last two questions, the one thing that I learned about um, a lot of the generations is the common themes between work ethic and materialism. My grandpa talked about how you always get places based on your work for the older generations, but younger generations can get places like kind of slacking off or based on connections and networking, but that's not how it used to be. And then the social... Um, the communication theory that I connected it to was social learning theory, and that is when people learn through observations, they model their behaviors off of them. So I know it's like everyone I in interviewed, it seemed like their immediate family environment really shaped who they were today, and they all seemed very like to appreciate and respect the hard work ethic, and everyone got this from their parents. So thank you for my presentation. I had a great semester. Bye.